What's going on guys? I'm back again with another unboxing. I'm cranking out videos like crazy again. This guy's going to be a part of that little project I was telling you about, but this is a very special keyboard and I'm in need of getting a new keyboard anyway. I have an old PS2 keyboard from my Windows XP days that's kind of starting to lose a bit of its touch. It's not responding so well with the keys. So I was on the market to look for a new keyboard and when I was deciding to do this little project of mine, um, which I will show off in the next video and you'll get to see what I'm actually doing, I need a very, very special colored keyboard. I need a keyboard in the color of beige. Now I don't know how many people are interested in the beige color, but I am one for it and I do need it for that little project, so finding anything in the color of beige is very hard nowadays if you want something that's new and uh, has new quality features, it's kind of hard to find. But Unicomp, a little company that makes, again, these very special keyboards, does sell that. In fact, they make a keyboard that is based off the keyboard of all keyboards, the Model M. If you don't know what that is, the IBM Model M keyboard came out around in 1985. It was the first true mechanical keyboard with a buckling spring switch. It's nothing like it's nothing like normal keyboards that you see nowadays. Normal keyboards, you know, you have your Cherry MX blacks, reds, browns, blues. They make different sounds, have different feels. But the IBM Model M was the first true mechanical keyboard and was also the keyboard that kind of popularized the whole numeric uh, keypad and the layout of a keyboard that we know today. It kind of made that the standard. And being that they had very special switches, which are known as the buckling spring switches, it's basically when you push down on a key, you feel a little tactile click on the keyboard itself. But this keyboard is basically the predecessor to that keyboard in more ways than one, and I'll actually explain that while I go ahead and get this guy unboxed. So, I already opened him up, but here you have it, right off the bat. This keyboard you're looking at right here is a Unicomp classic 104 key USB type keyboard. So it's got the USB connection on the end of it. You can opt to get these guys in the USB or the PS2 configuration. It doesn't only come in this pearl color as it states here, which is the beige color. There is also a black color if you'd like to go with that as well. You can get the keyboard with or without the Windows key. You can get one with just the Windows key on the left hand side. You can customize this almost any way you'd like. But for me, I sprung for the Classic model, which is based off the exact same dimensions as the Model M keyboard that was produced back in the 80s. And the history with the Model M is that it was made by IBM all the way up through, I believe, the early 90s from when they sold off their keyboard division to Lexmark, which is located in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, all the way up till 1996, where I believe that some of the employees actually purchased the tooling to make the keyboards, broke off, and started Unicomp, which they used the original tooling and all the original parts that are used to cast all the plastic for the keyboard. So the plastic that is on this is a new type of plastic, but it is filled into a mold that is almost 30 plus years old. Now, some people were complaining about that the keyboards weren't exactly the best quality when it came to the plastic casting because they were using 30 plus year old molds to make this keyboard. The newer style keyboards that they do offer, like the, the compact version of this, which I believe is called the Ultra Classic, and some of the other trackball layouts that they have, where you can get a trackball up here at the top, those use a slightly modified version of that mold, so I don't believe they're using the same one. But this one in particular actually does use the exact same molding from the Model M keyboard. And because of that, you might see a few blemishes in the plastic or a few areas that might be a little bit messed up. I mean, usually they're up here at the top and if you go for the beige style like I do, you really don't tend to see that a whole lot. But I haven't seen any reviews on this keyboard for 2016. It seems like they kind of tweak it every year. So I'm gonna see if anything has changed on the keyboard from the reviews that I've seen. and. Uh, We'll see if anything is uh, different, what's good and what's bad. Looking at the keyboard already, I do see some very, and I'm talking some very light marks that I almost can't see with my own eyes. The only real thing that stands out is there is a bit of a dent 
right here on the plastic. You can't feel it. It just looks like it's there. I mean, it's just, it looks like it's there, but it's not physically in the plastic itself. Again, that's just a blemish that is on the keyboard itself, and that's coming from the mold that's almost, like I said, 30 plus years old. And pulling it on out, we have the cable that is physically attached to the end of it. Uh, there's no way to remove it like the original Model M's. You could actually unattach the, uh, detach the keyboard. Uh, it does come in the USB form factor option like I asked for. Uh, again, you can't get it in the PS2. And at the very bottom of it, we have the one year limited warranty that comes with the keyboard as well. So it's nice to know that they back up their keyboards in case if anything happens. And just to say too, I'm not getting sponsored or anything for this keyboard. I just wanted it for the project I was doing. And it is a very, very, very nice keyboard. I will say that. It's uh, it's actually feels quite rigid taking out the box. It weighs a little under six pounds from what the uh, shipping label says. Uh, in terms of flexing the keyboard, the, the bottom part does feel a little loose in terms of wiggling the keyboard, but I'm talking it's very, very minimal compared to the current keyboard that I have from 2005 that flexes like crazy. There is a metal back plating that they use in the back of these keyboards to actually uh, strengthen it, and that's what the original Model M's did as well. So they do try to hold up to the original Model M standards as much as they can while still using the original tooling. Okay, I'm gonna bring the camera a little bit closer now so we can actually get an up-close look at the keyboard, so I apologize if it knocks out of focus or anything like that, but taking a closer look at the keyboard up front, it does feel very sturdy for what it is because of that metal plate that I mentioned. Uh, let's see if I can find one of those blemishes up in the plastic. Uh, I'm trying to get it to focus. So you can kind of maybe see that in the light. It looks like a little streak right there. Again, it's just because this plastic that they're, the, or the moldings for the plastic that they're using is almost 30 years old or even over, I believe. It's just very difficult to keep the style original. They could make new tooling for it, but um, it's just your personal taste, and I assume they like to keep it as original as possible. Therefore, they're using those old molds. Also, taking a closer look at some of the keycaps, because they're using the original tooling, can kind of make out here especially on these side function keys for uh, up here for print scan it looks like the labeling the system key and the break key the lettering seems to overlap a little bit around the edge it looks like it's a little too high up on the keyboard um, that could be just a misprint for all I know but again they use these uh late or the labeling they use for these uh, keys is the same 30 year old material but most people have complained in some of the videos that I saw that these keycaps don't hold up to quality, like they they lose some of their lettering. From what I'm telling off the bat in 2016, late 2016, looking at this keyboard, it looks pretty darn nice for what it is. All the lettering seems crisp, everything seems to look and feel like it's new. That is definitely something different from the Cherry MX Blue Switches that I was looking at uh, until I decided to go with this keyboard. They, they have that same sound as a Cherry MX, but they have much, much more resistance. Like, you have to push a lot harder. You have to push a lot harder to get the key to register. Um, not in a bad way, it does feel like more like a typewriter, if anything else, but that's why I went with this keyboard. So on the back, we actually have our little feet back here, which are really solid, wow. So these are just like, those are just hollow plastic, but they are very, very sturdy and they kind of click into place like that. Um, they're not very high off the ground, so to give you an idea, got the width of my pinky, so I mean, they're not exactly very height adjustable uh, feet, but again, that's something I'm not really worried about. Uh, the other guy over here as well. The screws that they're using are actually, those are the same screws I believe that they used on the Model M's as well. So they're really trying to keep everything original as best as they can. They have down here two little rubber feet in white, uh, none at the top. I assume that's what these little stands here, these, these uh, feet that aren't rubberized. I guess this is just more for 
keeping it uh, leveled more than it is for sliding since they only have one foot here and the other one over here. What you see on the original Model M's, I think not all the Model M's, but most of the originals, they have these little slots down here at the bottom of the keyboard. It's called a drip tray. The meaning behind that is that, you know, in case if you spill a drink or any liquid gets into the keyboard itself, obviously that's not good, but the majority of the liquid, once it's spilt, is to run towards the back of the keyboard and actually just drip out the bottom so it can uh, clean itself out very easily. It looks like we also have a little sticker here on the back that gives us some information on the keyboard. So this guy was put together on October 24th, 2016. Uh, we got the pin and the serial number as well. It even has the original uh, the original Model M labeling from the keyboard as well, which is pretty cool. Um, plus 5 volts, and they've even added the Unicomp uh, logo on that plastic as well. Same stuff up here too. It also looks like there's some handwriting on there, B. I don't know if that's someone's initials or if that's just a quality check or maybe even a maybe even a SKU uh, identifier for this kind of keyboard, for this configuration. There was one other function uh, that the old Model M's had that I think Unicomp still carries over to their new keyboards, and that's the ability to, I think we can do it here, there we go. That's the ability to actually take off the keycaps without removing the whole key itself. So what you can actually do is you can replace individual keycaps or different colors, put different styles on any one of these keys individually, which is actually pretty cool, uh, but taking a look here at the uh, keycap itself, um, I believe it's made of ABS plastic. It feels very sturdy when I try to, try to squeeze it. It does flex a little bit, but it doesn't feel like I'll be able to snap it or anything. It is also texturized on the top, but it also looks like that printing seems pretty refined to me as well. So people saying that some of the printing on the buttons, especially over here in this area, were faded or a little bit off. I mean, like I said before, the system and the brake uh, lettering on these two keys up here are a little, let me see how you can do that, they're a little too high for my tastes, but um, again, that's probably just a little mistake from the uh, from the printing, but everything else does seem Pretty accurate for what I for what I'm seeing on the keyboard. The keyboard is not known for its looks; it's known for its functionality. Um, let's see if I can find anything else. Uh, up here on the top, it looks like there's little tiny. You can kind of see them. Those little tiny nubs of plastic that are on each of the keys. So again, is this a good keyboard? Yes. Is it a great keyboard? Not per se. I mean, it's, it depends on what your definition of a good keyboard is. This keyboard is coming off of 30-year-old parts and tools that they're using to manufacture it, but it still feels and operates like it was a brand new keyboard. The shift button has a bit of a blemish on it, there's blemishes up here, tiny little nicks on the plastic on the back of these keys. But you know, it, those are just tiny little nitpicks, and yeah, I can nitpick all day long with this keyboard in particular. Uh, but the whole thing, even though it feels like quality plastic, and it is quality plastic, and it's heavy, and it, it feels like a solid piece of actual material, even if it has a few blemishes here and there. I got the keyboard for the vintage look, and I'm, I really dig the, I'm really digging the Windows keys too, that's why I'm really, that's what really tops it all off for me, including the beige styling, um, you know. And the fact that you can get a keyboard like this, brand new, and you can even opt to go with something like USB, and it's a one foot long USB cable, so that way it will work, it'll work on pretty much any system you go to plug it into, no drivers, nothing like that needed. I mean, this is a very solid keyboard for what it is. I'll say I'll give the overall appearance of the keyboard an A-. I mean, it's almost perfect for what it's trying to pull off. It's just those tiny little blemishes are the only thing that just kind of throws it off. And you do notice them, uh, but I mean, these are not going to bother me by any means at all. If you want a buckling spring switch keyboard, hands down, Unicomp is the only way you, you can go. I'm sure there are some knockoffs and some cheaper models that you can get, but being that Unicomp actually owns the patent for the buckling spring switch and you have the true tactile feedback, you hear that, that metal reinforced click, I mean, 
This is a true bubbling spring switch keyboard coming straight from the pad and straight from the guys that made the original Model M. This is a Model M keyboard, the king and holy grail of all keyboards, just refurbished, repackaged, and made as a brand new keyboard with a few new bells and whistles. This is the only keyboard you should go with if you want a buckling spring switch keyboard. Because of that, I think I'm going to give the functionality portion of the keyboard itself a solid A+. That being said, the Unicom Classic keyboard is a definite buy in my book, and if you want a buckling spring switch keyboard, you should definitely take a look at their website and see what kind of keyboards would fit for you. Um, if you have any other questions about the keyboard as well, feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. solid.